All right, so I want to go over some of these comments here, and I really appreciate them. Um, let me start off the first one, Ephesians 6.12. That's the name of the YouTuber. And let's go to Ephesians 6.12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Right, so that's a great verse, and that's absolutely true. Now, uh, truth sets you free. I can't say that. Mediocre Monday? I'm not sure if that's right my English is not very good it is good to expose evil but the main thing is to understand the word of truth Jesus is the truth all right and so that was regarding this video here I love to hear how you see this um, the Bible points to Jesus that's clear also you mentioned that you were embarrassed by the stupid things you did I also have this even shame but also if you know your sin you also know more that you need a savior you need Jesus he is our life right so let me piggyback on that real quickly um, first of all uh, this this fella here uh, shared the video I did on this so I want to recommend this guy's got 4,000 videos a lot of people are watching his stuff he's got very interesting stuff I haven't seen it all I did share this video here uh, with my cousin a while back and it's got some very interesting stuff but um, I want to go back and sort of Uh, well, this is you know this is kind of really cool stuff here. If you haven't seen it, uh, it really will put into question everything that we're being sold. On TV, right? So, like the Bible says, prove all things and hold fast that which is true right so let me go show you something here now this guy here <clears throat> he rejects Jesus Christ fully and he's bold about his rejection of the Lord Jesus Christ but he's also subtle and deceptive in pretending to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And you see a lot of these people today. And you read about this um, throughout the Bible. Uh, Matthew 7, I think, is the, my go-to, I guess, to make it real simple and easy to understand that not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter in the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. And the will of the Father is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied? Have we not taught in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in equity. These, thing, these three things mentioned, teaching, casting out devils and doing many wonderful works these are not sins these are good things but Jesus says I never knew you why because they were trusting in what they were doing and not trusting in what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us these are polar opposites of one another okay so the you know this begs the question well if you're not once saved always saved then how do you get saved or how do you regain salvation after you lose it and you'll see two unsaved devils reply 
repent of sin well if that's how you regain salvation then there is absolutely no need for Jesus Christ to have died on the cross he did it in vain according to we obey Jesus All right, and so also free gold bug he also denies what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us and he says the same way you get saved in the first place repent and be faithful so there's absolutely no need for the death of Jesus Christ his offering of his body was in vain according to these people and you just save yourself right and but that's not true we that are saved know that we need a savior we can't do it ourselves we can't save ourselves that's why we need a, a, a savior and these people they're not there yet I hope they figured out how foolish and how stupid um, this you know what they're teaching is I can't even call it gospel because it's not gospel the idea that you have to do something to be saved that is totally contrary with everything in the Bible from the very beginning it really is because even in the very beginning there was offerings made to God and what is your offering oh if I sin whoops I repent and now you're saved that's not an offering to God you thinking or saying I repent of my sin is not an offering to God to cover your sin back way back when when Cain and Abel was making offerings to God those they, they didn't oh I repent or when Noah and the sons of God be, before were making offerings to God and Abraham and those when they were making offerings to God they were not just saying oh I repent that was actually instructed to uh, how to um, make these offerings to God but the offering of blood and bulls would never take away sins it was only by the offering of the blood of Jesus that our sins could be forgiven it, it was never in nowhere in the Bible was it ever oh I repent of sin therefore my sin is covered that's never been the case not not even remotely close all right so anyways I just want to point that out here and let's go back here yeah yeah so again if you you know those of us that are saved understand fully that we need a savior that's why we believe in Jesus we can't we know we can't do it ourselves right excellent video brother you really make it easier to understand these things I wish you the best and hope you can make more videos blessed be his name forever and ever Jesus is the way here's BRL I really hate people like this now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teaches but which the Holy Ghost teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual but the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God for they are foolishness unto him neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned but he that is spiritual judges all things yet he himself is judged of no man right and so in case you're not familiar I just point out you know the stuff in this video is very interesting but um, when the Bible says show or study to show thyself approved it's talking about studying the Word of God studying the Bible and not going after following these uh, strange gods 
and studying strange gods. We are called to actually not do that, to not go after strange gods. No question that stuff is interesting. But um, in my opinion, I think sometimes people put too much effort into looking after strange gods and not reading the plain, pure word of God that, that they hold in their hands. So, anyways, I uh, appreciate that right there. Amen, brother. Lord Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. Hebrews 12, verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. And that's in reference to the oopsie sin versus willful sin. You see time and time again these people talking about, oh, if you willfully sin, you're going to lose your salvation. As if, well, if you oopsie sin, you know, if you, oops, I accidentally cheated on my wife, well, that's okay. Just say, I repent of my sin, and all is forgiven. Now, that's just, uh, <laughs> is there a nicer way to say than that's just dumber than dog do? It, it has absolutely no connection, no relation to anything in the Bible at all. This mentality, completely foreign to what we read in the Word of God. Now, uh, just to clarify, hey, if it's wrong to sin. Whether you're saved or unsaved, it's wrong to sin. That's what the law shows us, that we are sinners. The reason why we that are saved come to the Lord Jesus Christ is because we know we are sinners, because we know we cannot save ourselves. We can't be perfect, but Jesus is perfect. And he is, uh, he leads the way. He is our the perfect example for us to live by. And so we try, right? We try, but, but we, no matter how hard we try, we come up short. And um, that's the whole reason why we came to Jesus in the first place is because we know we need a Savior. We're not perfect. We can't be perfect. But we can rely and depend on the Lord Jesus Christ who is perfect and who was made sin for us to cover all our sins. Once and for all, by the offering of his body on the cross. Alright, so was there some, one more thing I wanted to share? Maybe I just wanted to talk a little bit about this maybe 70 AD there again I just want to reiterate there's nothing in the Bible that at the 70 AD has no relation to anything in the Bible at all nothing at all and then I think there was one thing the priest of God and of Christ and the reason why this is so important to understand that right now we that are saved are priests of God and of Christ right now is to make it easier to understand Revelation 20 because you see so many people teaching on this false end time eschatology making it complicated and confusing I was just talking to somebody the other day and they said it's so confusing it's so hard to understand well if you read Matthew 24 you would know it's very easy to understand because they ask him very plainly what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world and Jesus talks about all the troubles that we're going to have in this world. And then uh, the sun will be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. This, this goes back, this is in the Old Testament as well. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in, in heaven, which is Jesus. And everybody's going to mourn when they see Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other so to put it real simply Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven the angels gather us they we are lifted up in the air right at, at a moment in the twinkling of an eye we are changed 
in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, we are changed. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. To get more information on this, or more specific, if you or more information, probably a better way to say it. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall raise first, then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Alright, so to put this simply, Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. We that are saved are lifted up, first the dead, and then those of us which are alive are lifted up with them. All right, we are we that are saved are lifted up. This is what Jesus talks about when he talks about the harvest, the wheat and the tares. I don't know if I can find it using that word. Maybe I can. No, probably not. Absolutely not. So if I go like this, probably. So when Jesus talks about the kingdom of heaven and what, what's going to happen, he says that, uh, that w when Jesus, when he comes, that there will be a separation from the, the wheat from the tares. We that are saved are the wheat, and the, the unsaved are the tares. And when he, Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, the wheat is gathered up up in the air and the tares are at our feet and the fire comes down and destroys them all all right and this is not a one-time deal this is all throughout the bible and so also when we read revelation 20 it says the same thing it's very consistent with what we read in matthew 13 matthew 24 mark 13 luke 21 all throughout the bible you know, in, in uh, Corinthians and Thessalonians and so forth. So it's important if you understand that we are priests of God and of Christ right now. <clears throat> That's number one. And then I guess number two or maybe number one would be knowing and understanding that Jesus Christ reigns forever. There is no end to his reign. It's just ridiculous in my opinion. When you hear people say Jesus Christ reigns a thousand years, the assumption has to be that at the end of the thousand years he doesn't reign anymore. What I mean, otherwise why are you saying he reigns a thousand years? He doesn't reign a thousand years. The Bible never says he reigns a thousand years and you're gonna find out one way or the other that Jesus Christ does not reign 1,000 years he reigns forever and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end alright so people are lying when they say Jesus Christ reigns a thousand years that's just untrue if it's untrue it's a lie and these people are liars so if you're one of them you, you want to get right with God alright so when it talks about the thousand years in verse 4 and verse 6 for example it's talking about they lived and reigned with Christ again they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years this is talking about those of us that are saved reigning with Christ during this time period. And if Jesus Christ does not reign, if you do not reign with Christ right now, how can you say that you are saved? And I don't know if I'm going to be able to find uh, this verse, but uh, in John somewhere, Jesus talks about, I shall abide in them. If a, if, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. So, in other words, he abides in us, and we abide in him. Abide in me, and I in 
you. All right, so that we reign with Christ right now. During this time period, the reason why it's um, classified, if you will, as a thousand year time period is because it's unique time period. It's unlike the time before baby Jesus, and it's unlike the time after the return of our Lord Jesus Christ in the clouds of heaven. This is a unique time period where we spiritually are abiding in Christ. Jesus Christ is in us and we are in him spiritually. And then when he comes, that's the fulfillment of all things and he puts an end to evil, or he puts an end to death, puts an end to sin forever. All right, and then that's all this is talking about. So the other part I, I like to talk about is, is would be this idea that well Satan's going to be loosed at the end of a thousand years. Yeah, so it tells us exactly why he's bound for a thousand years, right? And that is so when he's loosed, he gathers together the unsaved at our feet. Right, just like what we read about in Revelation 3, just like what we read about in Genesis 3. Let me go, let me go all the way back. Yeah, and if you, you probably heard me say this a hundred times, but um, God says, um, because you deceived the woman, um, I will make thee to lie on thy belly. Let's see if I can even find this verse. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. In other words, this is talking about Jesus is going to stomp his heel on the serpent's head. In other words, he's going to be above, the serpent is going to be below, and he's going to smash out all inequity forever and ever. Alright, so if we fast forward, um, what is it? Uh, Psalm 114, I think. All right. I'm, this is the 110, I'm sorry. And the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. All right, so the enemy is going to be thy footstool. So again, this parallels what we read in Genesis 3, where Christ stomps on the head of the serpent and destroys evil forever. All right, and again, uh, and they went and again here in Revelation 20. All right, the, the the devil gathers together the unsaved, and we are up in the air with Christ, and Christ sends fire down and devours them all. That's equivalent to stomping his heel on the head of the serpent. All right, and then when this happens, that's it. Evil is done with, all right? And then, of course, this goes into uh, the great white throne, which is the same thing. This is not uh, as consequential as some people might teach, okay? So when the fire comes down from heaven, this is also the great white throne. All right, this is just a vision to help us to understand the end time. All right, and the judgment of God is who is saved and who is not saved. All right, so this is when the fire comes down from God, the judgment is being made. These people are not saved. So they are destroyed, they are devoured, they are by fire. They are destroyed forever. And we are up in the air with the Lord Jesus Christ. That judgment has been made. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and we are changed in the twinkling of an eye, that is the judgment of God. That is when judgment is made. All right. And the great white throne, of course, is Jesus Christ coming in the clouds of heaven and whose face the earth and heaven fled away. This parallels what we read in Matthew 24, 29. When it says, The sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Alright, this is a parallel, same exact thing. 
that we read in verse 11 whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them so think about this there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth all right and so there's the old heaven and the old earth is going to be done away with whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and just like what we read in, in revelation 21 and i saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth first earth were passed away and there was no more sea all right so these all the all these things are connected and uh, it's very simple it's not rocket science when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it is the great day of the Lord it is judgment day and those of us that are saved are lifted up those who are not saved are gathered at our feet and they are destroyed forever and we are changed in the twinkling of an eye just like what we read in Revelation 3 behold I will make them of the synagogue of Satan which they say they are Jews and are not but do lie behold I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee this parallels what we're just talking about here that we are lifted up in the air our enemies are gathered at our feet I will make them to come and worship before thy feet all you have to do is connect the dots it's real simple right and this is all throughout the Bible just like what we read in Genesis 3 thou shalt bruise his heel Christ will stomp his heel on the serpent on all the serpent represents all the wickedness of the world that includes the unsaved till I make thine enemies thy footstool thy footstool he's gonna put his foot on their head and crush it forever all right very simple stuff now you see all these pe um, uh, preachers they you see them a lot of them talking over oh, the end time eschatology while well, they're all getting getting their information the ones that are teaching falsely this idea of a thousand year reign of Christ they're getting all this from men they're not getting it from the Bible you're not gonna find this idea in the Bible at all and they're getting for whatever reason they don't trust the Bible that they hold in their hands they're trusting what other men before them taught and they're going off of false teachers and it's worse than ever before it's crazy I can give you one example and then I'll shut her down Matt Daniel 9 this is the one that really gives me the red butt and after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off all this prophecy here the Messiah that's Jesus Christ it's absolutely insane to suggest the Messiah is the Antichrist man you're on the wrong side of the fence if you think the Messiah is the Antichrist I mean, there's something seriously wrong with what you're teaching and you ought to analyze exactly what the Bible says just because you don't understand it doesn't mean by default you know you have to listen to what a preacher says just listen read the Bible if it's not clear keep reading the Bible it's gonna clear up for you eventually all this has already happened this has nothing at all to do with 70 AD it's utterly Jesus took away our sins he was the sacrifice he causes the sacrifice and oblation to cease because he gave his body to be the sacrifice all right people talk about the temple and the temple was destroyed and Jesus is that temple he destroyed the temple and rebuilt it in three days that's there's no third temple why in the world are people relying on false teachers people that they're relying on people that have no understanding of the Bible whatsoever and they're not relying on what the Word of God says and just like in that vo that video I pointed out the other day on Valencia or I don't whatever that is 
Balenciaga, okay? The Bible says, study to show thyself approved. And by golly, that's what you ought to be doing, is studying the Word of God. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. And the Bible is the truth. So let's see if I can find something uh, to support that here. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. All right. Study the Bible. It takes five minutes to read a chapter. And question every preacher. Question everything, every doctrine that's being taught question them all and challenge them don't be ashamed if you know or you don't know don't be ashamed just seek the truth prove all things hold fast that which is good right, I want to thank you guys again for your comments great stuff here um, appreciate every single one of them and Again, uh, you know, uh, you want to check out this video? I'll leave a link to this guy's YouTube channel. Uh, again, this stuff is, is it's kind of cool to see what technology can do, and it might help you. It helps me, I guess, to see that hey, just because these guys are showing you some crazy stuff on TV these great signs and miracles doesn't mean it's true what you're seeing might not be true and like uh, with that other guy his his uh, channel Ephesians 6 12 yeah we're not up against flesh and blood right we're up against spiritual wickedness in high places that means a people with a lot of money and a lot of power are out there deceiving you and your children fellas we are in a war so let's be ready let's be ready what is that verse that uh, behold I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Alright, good day.